Well, one of the biggest concerns for the communities impacted by the volcanic activity is some very dangerous gas. Now, to break down that science behind the lava flow in Puna, we're joined in studio by University of Hawaii geologist Julia Hammer. Good morning. Good morning. So happy to have you here um, to break this down for us because it's, it's very dangerous, not just the direct lava, but also the gases coming from it. So can you explain what are the gases coming from it and how are they harmful? Well, the majority of the gas is actually just plain old H2O. Um, and that is, comes as a surprise to most people because that's not the gas that's hazardous, so we don't pay as much attention to it. The hazardous gas is sulfur dioxide, mm -hmm. so SO2. And it has an acrid smell. It's very acidic and burning. It has a throat burning sensation when you encounter it, so it does give itself away in, in warning signs. It is not the rotten egg hydrogen sulfide smell that you might um, associate with sulfur, but ah. it is a different compound that has sulfur in it. Interesting. So it's kind of more of a feel then than a smell? It's a burning and it's a feeling that makes you want to swallow to kind of flush out your throat when, when you encounter it. It's a very noxious feeling. It doesn't, you know, it's not healthy right away. Oh, very interesting. Okay, so can you explain the link between the recent seismic activity and what happened yesterday that is causing the lava flow? Okay, so the seismic activity was actually the best uh, definitive indicator that magma was traveling down the rift zone um, in the vicinity of where it then erupted from the surface. We couldn't pinpoint in advance where that would be, but there was a steady and um, intensifying progression of earthquake activity moving down the rift zone away from Pu'u'u'u. Mm -hmm. And then is that what then causes the eruptions, the earthquakes? Uh, or is, the, which is yeah. first, I guess. Right. Well, in fact, the, the magnitude 5 eruption, um, earthquake that happened yesterday is, is a pretty significant amount of energy release, and it's not totally clear at this moment um, what the mechanism was for that, mm -hmm. but there was obviously a lot of strain that was, was um, occurred in response to a buildup of stress, and so that's part and parcel of the magma moving down the rift zone. Okay. So they're related, but it's a... Um, we have to work out the cause and effect. Not you know. necessarily the main trigger, but it could right. potentially be. Yeah. And, and how often do, do these eruptions happen in Kilauea? Well, as you probably know, Kilauea has been eruption in an ongoing state of eruption for almost 40 years. Mm -hmm. uh, but what is kind of episodic and really exciting for volcanologists is every 10 or 12 or, or so years, there's a fissure eruption that's outside of one of the known um, uh, pit craters or, or the, at the summit. So when the last one, Kamoa Moa, 2011, was a fissure eruption. And there have been such events um, previously. 1955 was a really significant one. Okay. And then you were saying, you know, as a geologist, you know, people are, when you see stuff like this, it's, you know, you learn so much from it. And the data that you're getting, what do you learn from that data from these eruptions? Well, I can tell you there are probably half a dozen PhD theses that are being born right now <laughs> yes. these eruptions. So everyone has a different interest. Uh, some people are interested in the rocks and maybe monitoring how the chemistry of the lavas are changing through time so we can kind of monitor the whole plumbing system. Other people are interested in the geophysical manifestations and what it is telling us about volcano deformation um, and accommodation of magmas being injected into the rift zone. So kind of everybody. There are atmospheric people, there are gas chemistry people, so everyone has something to learn when the volcano erupts. Okay, good to know. And again, we're going to be continuing coverage on this, uh, but we actually had a viewer that sent in a question about acid rain. Can you really okay. quickly explain that? Well, um, acid rain forms when the sulfur dioxide that's coming out of the volcano mixes with uh, water molecules from the air and is impacted with by sunlight and dust and reactions occur that create droplets that mm -hmm. then fall, condense, fall out as rain. And uh, people on the Big Island will already be very familiar with VOG and to a lesser extent acid rain. Um, big events are not as common as just regular VOG. I mean an acid rain event is a significant event that's documented by the Hawaii Volcano Observatory. Okay. Um, Wonderful. Well, thank you so much. Again, geologist Julia Hammer joining us this morning from the University of Hawaii. So happy to have you. And thanks for breaking that down for us. Thanks. All right.